and uh, I'm a researcher at the Cognitive Sciences and Time Series Lab at the University of Columbia School of Computing. And I have Sahan with me, and he's also a researcher at Fox Lab as well as a researcher at the, uh, the AIT. So um, today, let's talk about uh, FIDO2, the future of authentication. Now, as you, you already know, passwords are not safe anymore. If you ask me why, it's not just. Oh, you? Uh, let me speak into it, but you can it down here. Okay, sure. Which and this. About there, yeah. That's good. Awesome, thanks. So um, let me start over. So as you know, passwords are not safe uh, already. If you ask me why, 52% of the users use the same password for multiple accounts in their day-to-day -day lives. Now, this leads to many kinds of attacks, such as prayer attacks, brute forcing, and even credential stuffing attacks. Now, you can see how uh, the simple and predictable passwords can lead to vulnerability issues. If you uh, want to figure out if your password has been compromised, you can use this website, Have I Been Pwned, and uh, check whether if it has already been pwned or not. So as a solution for these simple passwords, we have something called MFA, multi-factor authentication. Now, this basically refers to uh, having two or more verification uh, steps in order to gain access to a certain kind of application. Now, in MFA, we have many kinds of MFA types available in the world. So these three things are the most common stuff. The first one is knowledge based, the things you know, such as your pin number, security questions and stuff. And then possession based, something you have, uh, such as SMS OTP and TOTP. And then the final one is inherited based, things you are, such as your biometrics, fingerprints, your breads, your eyes, and everything. Now let's talk about FIDO. FIDO stands for Fast Identity Online. And that's a kind of a combination of all these three types I mentioned earlier. A FIDO refers to a set of open and uh, standardized authentication protocols that is ultimately uh, intended to eliminate passwords, which is very vulnerable and outdated in a security perspective. Right? So if FIDO 2 authentication standard, it basically is an umbrella term for these two protocols. The first one is the FIDO Alliance's specification for CTAP. CTAP means the Client Authenticator <laughs> Protocol. And then the second one is the W3C's Web Authent Protocol. Now, I'll, I'll explain this on the latest slides. So, FIDO uh, comes up with these two, uh, the combination of these three protocols. And then you have FIDO. Right, so this is how actually FIDO works. Now, you have the Web Authent and CTAP protocols side by side. Now, first of all, you have the client platform. This basically refers to your laptop or your PC and everything. And then we have something called an authenticator. The authenticator can be external or maybe internal. So an internal authenticator might be your uh, touch ID on your iPad or MacBook. And an external authenticator can be an ex something external that you have that you have to plug into your computer. So the CTAP protocol works in between the authenticator and the client platform. It uh, it will be used to communicate between those two platforms using BLE or NFC or Bluetooth uh, or even maybe USB. Now, web Authent protocol, uh, you can use that to communicate between your client platform and the relying party. So the relying party basically refers to some kind of an authentication server on the cloud or your uh, network. So the web Authent protocol will communicate between those two and complete your authentication request. Right. So this is an in detail uh, flow of how FIDO works. Since we don't have much time today, I'm not going to explain it. But you can uh, grab a quick photo of this one. Or maybe uh, I'm available around for another few hours. So you can just approach me and ask me and I'm happy to explain all this stuff. Right, so like I said, we have uh, external authenticators and internal authenticators. So Touch ID is an example for an internal authenticator and even Windows Hello. And external uh, authenticators, you can have uh, security keys like UV keys to put your fingerprints and authenticate, and stuff like that. So, ultimately, why FIDO? Why should we use FIDO instead of passwords and all this stuff? So, first of all, FIDO is stronger. It's resistant to all these attacks on simple password I mentioned earlier. And it's faster. All you have to do is uh, Put your fingerprint or maybe put in your UV key and you're good to go. And then it's private and it's convenient, very convenient. Just you have to just use your biometrics to access all your social media platforms or GitHub accounts and everything. 
and it's supported on very leading browsers and even softwares, this integration. And then uh, it fits most of the use cases available today's world. And then it's industry back, and obviously, most of the organizations are moving on to uh, this kind of FIDO2 and uh, biometrics authentication protocols. And then it's already in the market uh, in leading companies. So, how can we integrate this FIDO2 into our existing application? Sahan is here to show you how to uh, integrate this file to with uh, real world applications. Thanks. So, as Sunil said, the last two points file to is industry back and in markets. So, where? Yeah. So, uh, let me give you cover it up with a practical examples, kind of a procedure of how file is using in Azure. Any Azure users here? Alright, cool. So, this is kind of an simplified and kind of a very concise way how Fire is integrating in Azure Activity Directory. So starting from the user plug in Fire Tube secret key into their computer, and then as you could see in the flow diagram, and then Windows detects this assume it's Windows device. So it's detect the Fire secret key, and then follows up with Azure AD is sent it back as a nonce, and then it's configured as a private key. And then it send it back this party key and Azure AD returns as a PRT to enable access to unprocessed resources. I'm not going to cover it up as kind of an descriptive way how the process is working. If you're wondering how it's working in dynamically in these levels, you could reach to me and ask your question if you have to. And then so how do we enable file to security keys in Azure Active Directory? So, uh, first you have to sign in into your Azure portal and then browse it to Azure Active Directory and then go to security section and the authentication method, you can find a method called authentication method policy. Then the other thing you have to do is, under the method of Fire2 secret key, you have to public it and enable for all the users or any specific groups you are interested in, the enable Fire2 secret keys and yes. That you could go and set the configuration. And what are the other methods available? Obviously, you can use WSO2 Escario, it also provides Azure Fire 2 secret keys. And there are tons of other options available as well in Escario. And what would be the future for Fire 2? So, what are the possible research directions and what would be the possible things with Fire 2? So the first thing is the integration with emerging technologies like Internet of Things, obviously machine learning, for allowing seamless and secure authentication across widespread devices. And the second is the supporting with new forms of biometric authentication. Right now there are many research are going on in the sections of facial recognition, fingerprint recognition, and eye scanning in UI, and providing even greater security and convenience for users. And last, the increased support from hardware and software, vendors making it easier for organizations starting from Microsoft to other organizations like WSO2 and many organizations currently adapting for the tool. So for implement and integrate the technology into their system. So uh, that's it for me here. If you have any sort of question, you would like to ask. So actually we would uh, love to have a conversation with you guys that's talking about focusing on. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Yes, sir. Uh, well, not so much a question, but one reason why I don't enable fingerprints uh, in my devices is because, uh, I don't know if you know this, but a few years ago we had a situation where the thief cut off the thumbs. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and use it to access, uh, I think, the, 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 the car or something like that. It sounds like in such an environment, uh, fingerprint authentication is a, not a good idea. I don't know. I, I'm still debating this. I, said, I don't, I don't yeah. know if you have any. That, that's very that's <laughs> not a question, but uh, I, 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 I'm not a reason where some of us are saying Let's say uh, someone's eyes were uh, popped out of this gun uh, to test out the next scan. Right. That kind of thing has happened. So, <laughs> actually, we don't know. Uh, 
uh, how would the legislation work and how can it change the people's mindset to remain humane? So yeah, I think we just try to wait on and see how. So, 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 so basically it's not appropriate for like high risk groups, right? That like, 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 like you think that you, you, that you live in a neighborhood or you interact with people who yeah. are willing to hold you down and use your thumb to force open something. So in that, in, in that case, is it better if you just use password? So what if you are uh, some kind of a top-ranking government official and your password uh, was faced by some kind of a hack and then you are exposed and you just spend your rest of the life behind bars? Well, well. But still better than uh, having your thumb cut off. I think. <laughs> 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 but I have to just uh, wait and see where this goes about that. So, 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 so I, 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 I question it. Like, is this a really good idea? Uh, so if you evaluate the pros and cons, you have to always go for the solution that has most of the pros, right? right? So that actually depends on the use case and your environment and the uh, your operation kind of the business and all this stuff. Yeah. So, so, so it's not like a panacea. You really have to think carefully whether yeah. using this is going to make you more secure <coughs> or to expose you to other so. risks. I'll stick to my long passwords. Thank you. <laughs> I'm also questioning, uh, asking for your question. So, as far as the security risk is high, we also, you know, without what are the other limits that we can fill it down to defend or to maximize the layer of security. That's the way different ways we can create. Yeah. Metal gloves. Yep. Any <laughs> <laughs> other questions? Thanks very much, guys. Uh, yeah, I, I, the question about biometrics <laughs> is an unsolved one. Uh, every single thing, anytime someone says the solution to the problem is biometrics, all this tells you is that the speaker doesn't understand the problem or biometrics. <laughs> the idea of creating a, a market for stolen thumbs uh, seems like a terrible idea. So there's a, yeah, there's a, it's a case specific. I, I agree with that. Thank you so much, guys. It's a really nice topic. Thank you.